I support 16.5 release notes. Highlights. OAuth 2 has been added as a connection type for Gmail, leveraging Google's API for both outbound and inbound email via a Gmail account. The API uses OAuth 2 for authentication by default. Google and Microsoft have announced that they will end support for non-OAuth 2 authentication methods soon. After upgrading to this release, we recommend that, as soon as possible, you switch your iSupport settings to use the new OAuth 2 authentication and configure your identity provider, which could be Google, Azure AD, etc., to allow the needed access. OAuth 2 connection support has also been added for Office 365 Exchange Web Services, or EWS. Note that SSL is required for EWS OAuth 2 authentication. iSupport's QuickBooks API-based integration now supports and requires OAuth 2. Work item charts now include options for displaying total and average time open, total and business time open, and total and average time worked to show trends for specified time frames. Note that the total business time open and average business time open options only apply to incidents. You can configure a second set of criteria or series to display in the same chart. As a result, trending graphics can be configured. You can now enable automatic display of all matching knowledge entries in the view window at the bottom of the screen when a category is selected for an incident, problem, or change. A capture solution link will be included. Entries will appear for every level of the category set for which automatic knowledge search is enabled. Enable this feature via the automatic knowledge match field on the basics tab in the categories configuration screen. You can now specify the fields to copy from the applicable knowledge entry when the Capture Solution feature is used in the Incident screen. If the My Support URL field is enabled, you can use the Link Text field to enter clickable text that will appear in place of the My Support URL. Asset Features You can now copy asset types. The function will copy everything except the asset type name. If you have count enabled assets, you can now display a list of them via the Add Count Enabled link in the Assets field or via the Count Enabled Assets button in the Select Asset dialog. The Update Asset Counts dialog will appear for specifying the count used for the current work item. Two fields have been added for configuring the Count Used field in the Update Asset Counts dialog. Minimum count used for controlling the minimum amount that can be entered, and default count used to enter the amount to appear by default. Two new include field tags have been added for correspondence and custom notifications, non-count enabled asset details, and count enabled asset details. You can now specify the columns included for the asset field on work item and customer profile layouts. The new settings are included in the Configure Field dialog, access via the cog icon next to the Assets field label in the Layouts screen. By default, all are selected. Note that the Count Enabled Asset Grid field section will not be included if no Count Enabled Asset types are configured. Desktop Features Newsfeed configuration has changed from Component Settings to a Newsfeed Designer. You can access it via the Edit icon next to the Feed Name drop-down. If you select No in the Discussion Only field, tabs for configuring work item entries will appear. You can also access it via the New Speed Designer option on the Desktop Content menu and the Content Manager. You can now use the Export as Image icon in the Chart component on the desktop to export a chart as a .png file. The image size will be set based on the size and resolution of the frame in which the icon was clicked.
the Save button in the View, Report, and Chart Designers no longer executes a Save and Close action. It now enables you to save and stay in the screen. A Save and Exit button has been added for saving and exiting the screen. Count fields have been added to the Config Categories data source for incidents, changes, problems, and knowledge entries. These fields reflect the count of a single category that is directly linked to a work item. Several new fields have been added to the work items view designer data source. An SMS address field has been added to customer layouts and the customer data source in the view and report designers. It is used to display the SMS phone number entered by the customer via My Support account settings. Administrators can use it to troubleshoot an SMS notification send failure error in the iSupport event log, find the related customer, and clear the SMS phone number for that customer to prevent future SMS notification attempts and errors. Custom fields that are deleted by an iSupport user but are retained in the system because of references to other records are now designated by the words pending deletion prepended to the field label in the View and Report Designer data source lists. Work Item Features You can now configure knowledge rules to create an incident or change from a template. This enables you to assign a work item to a knowledge reviewer when a knowledge entry is due for review. Note that only templates configured with a default customer can be used and the resulting incident or change assignee will be the knowledge entries reviewer if one is set. If no reviewer has been set, the knowledge entries author will be assigned. Administrators can now set defaults for the options used when support representatives search for customers, other support representatives, assets, and configuration items. These options are set by support representatives via the search options icon and stored in a cookie. Use the Cookie Defaults tab in the Support Representative List screen to set defaults for these search options as well as for attachments. An update cookie when rep changes options field is included for each subtab. If yes is selected, the cookie will be updated with the search selections made when a support representative conducts a search. If no is selected, the cookie will not be updated with the search selections and these default settings will apply the next time the applicable search or attachment display is conducted. Two new recipient options have been added for incident and change rules, hierarchy assignees and hierarchy customers. You can use these options to notify the assignees of all of the lower level incidents of a related incident hierarchy from the parent incident. The is hierarchy root condition can help to avoid email loops. You can now enable or prevent display of the routing comments dialog for the incident change and problem screens via the Show Routing Comments dialog field on the Routing subtab for the applicable module in the Feature Basics screen. Note that this field will default to Yes. You can now specify business days or calendar days as the basis for incident follow-up and change date intervals. Use the Follow-up Interval Type field on the Incident Management Work History tab in the Feature Basics screen to specify business or calendar days for incident follow-up intervals. Use the Interval Type field on the Change Management Basics tab in the Feature Basics screen to specify business or calendar days for scheduled implementation, review, and due date intervals. You can also choose calendar or business date options for actions involving important date fields in incident and change rules. A call icon is now included in the Customer section on Saved Support Representative Incident, Customer, and Change layouts. When selected, a call will be initiated to the selected customer's telephone number via a link that references the client's OS setting for the default telephone voice device. Customer Assignee and Company Assignee fields have been added to the Customer Details section on Incident and Change layouts. A company status field has been added to the main layout area. This refers to the actual company status at the time an incident or change was created. Correspondence templates are now available when replying to or forwarding a correspondence. 
the template body will prepend to the existing body content that was populated upon the reply or forward action. The subject will remain unchanged if the applied correspondence is not set to prohibit editing. Administrators can now access configuration options in the asset and customer profile work item screens. For efficiency when including attachments on outbound notifications, a copy button is now included for attachments coming in through email update and or chat. When selected, a copy of the file is directly attached to the incident and the button changes to delete. My support features. You can now include text in the description field on an incident, change, incident hierarchy, or change hierarchy template and enable it to be removed when the user clicks in the field in the work item screen on my support. To enable this feature, select on in the description as placeholder for my support field on the basics tab in the incident management or change management template screen. Note that this field will default to off. You can also include text in the comments field on a purchase request template via the comments as placeholder field in the template configuration screen. In support of this feature, a comments field has been included in the My Support Purchase Submit layout. A show comments option has been added to the asset list item on My Support work item layouts. Use it to control display of the comments field on assets. You can now use settings in My Support Options to enable search and display of a list of all assets and a list of all configuration items in My Support Work Item Submission screens, regardless of access set in the Customer Profile screen. Note that this will not allow display of the full asset records to customers without access. A success message now appears when a My Support customer resets their password. That's it for an overview of iSupport's 16.5 release. If you have questions, be sure to consult the online help. Our support team is available for a more in-depth walkthrough. Contact them by email at support at iSupport.com and by phone at 360-397-1099, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. PST, Monday through Friday, and 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. PST, Saturday and Sunday, for critical system failures such as installation errors, inability to log in, or inability to create work items. You can also go to mysupport.isupport.com, iSupport Software's technical support website, to chat with support representatives, submit and view incidents, search the knowledge base, view facts, submit ideas, and participate in the user discussion forum.